Okay, optimistic lifestyle. Here we go again. Uh, we're uh, we're going to tell you on, on this segment about float fishing. Float fishing is probably the fastest growing segment of the salmon and steelhead market that I've seen. Uh, years ago, no one float fished. Today, you see floats in the water everywhere you go. The American River is one of the last rivers to come to the float scene. But last year, all the great guides, they were all using them. And there's a good reason. Uh, number one, the float allows you to put the bait right at the proper uh, elevation coming down through the water column, right in the salmon's face, right in their eyes. And it allows you to do that in a free floating manner. Uh, when you have a, ba uh, a, a weight dragging on the bottom, it's always pulling back against the thing and you don't get a real true free float uh, ahead. But under the float, you get your bait moving at the exact same uh, speed as the water and it's just a very, very uh, nice presentation. Uh, it's very natural presentation and the salmon really like it. So as it's being presented down that way. The other benefit is uh, there's a visual on, on, on the fish. When the fish bites your your uh, your line, uh, your float goes underwater and immediately you see it or hopefully you see it. But if you don't see it, I have a visual on your fish and I can yell at you, hey, hit it, hit it, hit it. You got a fish on, you got a fish on. So everybody can watch everybody's floats. It makes for a, a much better hit ratio and uh, you have instant contact with your eyes before you ever get it to the fish. So now you, you as you're uh, drifting down the river, the old way was just to drag baits behind you. That's called boondoggling. Boondoggling can be very effective, especially if there's a lot of fish in there and they're competing for the floating eggs that are coming by. So uh, boondoggling certainly can work, but the floating method is much easier. Uh, you don't get hung up as much. You don't have to continually retie your hooks. You don't have to retie your setups. You don't lose all the line. You don't do any of those things. And the other beautiful thing about it is, is uh, beginning anglers, uh, can do it with a bobber without getting tangled and and man that's essential uh, otherwise you spend all day tying and retying and, and you won't be fishing so the main thing is keep your bait in the water so I'm going to go over this rig we tied up uh, earlier on an earlier segment for you uh, but we're going to go over it right quick with you just to kind of give you how the setup works we're using a nine foot six inch G Loomis GL3 rod it's a medium rod it's kind of light in the tip it's got a super uh, you know extra fast tip on it very uh, lightweight tip. Also on this uh, on this rod we've got a, a Calcutta uh, DC. Um, this is a pretty nifty little reel here. Pretty hot, expensive little reel, but a uh, pretty nifty little reel. Uh, it's got electromagnetic uh, braking system on it. Hard to hard to backlash it. Great for this kind of application. Now this nine foot six rod allows us to keep a lot of the material, you know, the line and the float out of the water, but. Now I'm going to show you the rig that we're using. Uh, naturally, everything starts with uh, with snelling an egg loop. So the first thing you got to do is put your tie your egg loop. Uh, I've showed you many times on on other segments, you know how to do that. But you've got a little loop here. You put your egg in there, and as you get your egg into the loop, um, then you're ready with your uh, your bait. You've got your puff ball on there, which keeps your bait floating. I don't use the puff ball with the uh, with the float unless I have to. The next thing you're gonna you're gonna have is gonna be your, you know, I try to use three and a half to four feet liter. Uh, the the dingier the water, the the small the low the lower the liter. Uh, the smaller the liter, the more hookups you get. Period. That's all it is to it. Barrel swivel. On top of the barrel swivel, I've got a bead. On top of the bead, I've got a weight. I like to use the heaviest weight that my cork will allow me to use. You cannot use too much weight. If you do, you'll sink your cork. But if you use a bigger cork, you can use a bigger weight. And I've found that particularly with, with uh, in, you know, uh, anglers that haven't had a lot of experience, uh, you know, that the heavier weight seems to be easier for them to get set up on the hook, on the fish. So uh, you just, you know, bait these up, you cast them out up above the, uh, above your, your float, you have a, a bobber stopper, and a bobber stopper is merely just a piece of line that slides up, up on, and uh, it's got a tensioning uh, mechanism on it. You just pull it tight, and it, it tightens up real tight on your line, so it'll stop the bobber 
so the bobber doesn't go. This will actually reel through the eyes of your line of your rod, reel right through it, and uh, and therefore you don't have to carry so much material hanging that you have to cast out there. You want to set the depth on your weight on your float from one times to one and a half times the depth of the water. So if you're in eight feet of water, you want to set it from eight to twelve feet on your bobber. Now set it at eight. If you get bit at eight, leave it at eight. If you don't get bit at eight, set it at nine. If you don't get bit at nine, set it at ten. If you don't get bit, set it at eleven. And just work your way down till you find the bottom and find out where the fish are laying down there and get that bait in front of them and you'll have another way to catch your limit in Sacramento. Optimistic lifestyle. Here we go again. Get it on. Get your limit, boys.